Hello, this is Stephen Nichols, and I'm the Director of Business Development for Mission Critical Systems, which is a SharePoint development company based in Denver, Colorado. And I have a quick presentation for you today on nine ways to manage projects and schedules uh, using SharePoint. So we're going to talk through a few different ideas for how SharePoint can be that central collaboration tool that uh, gets everyone on the same page with the project. But I want to give a little bit of a lay of the land first before I dive into that. Uh, the first thing to mention is that Microsoft does offer Microsoft Project, which is a project management tool, and uh, it's, it's very widely used, and probably most people are familiar with that. Uh, project is great for a certain level of complexity, uh, but it's also a little heavy to use for some projects because some projects are too simple to really use a Microsoft Project document to manage it. So we see a lot of people using Excel uh, or just whiteboarding things instead uh, uh, to, uh, to organize their projects and uh, that works very well too. So what SharePoint does in particular is it serves a need for projects that are a little bit too complex to be managed through Excel, but not quite complex, complex enough to be managed through Microsoft Project. It's also good for projects that require a lot of collaboration, uh, require input from a, a wide variety or a large number of people, and that's the, that's the space or the type of project that uh, really SharePoint thrives in. So I'll start and show off some of the basic tools for using uh, SharePoint and uh, how that kind of makes your life easier with this. Uh, the first one is going to be a task list, since that's really the basis of all projects and schedules. And I have a, an example here of a very simple pro, uh, project task list. And as you've seen, I've clicked on the ellipsis to show some of the, of the options available for it. Uh, but we have here uh, major and minor tasks. The minor tasks are indented. I have due dates for this. I, I can also assign these tasks to individuals or create other custom metadata fields, as you're probably accustomed to with the rest of SharePoint. So I could have the, you know, the client related to it, or the department, or the type of work being performed. Those could all be custom fields uh, added to that task list. So this is very equivalent to the Excel spreadsheet that probably a lot of people use uh, to organize uh, uh, projects. Uh, timelines, that's going to be a more visual representation of a, a project task list. And um, you're probably more used to a, a Gantt chart. And this is an example of a Gantt chart that shows all the tasks and, and the way that they are going to stack up to each other with their, their critical path and whatnot. And that's a, another way of, it's a visual way of seeing that task list and uh, interacting with that. Now, SharePoint, of, of course, we talk a lot about how SharePoint can be uh, interacted with through Microsoft Office, that you don't have to open up a browser in order to interact with the, the task list or the calendars or the documents or or what have you. And, and this task list is no different. Uh, there's an interface through Outlook as well, and an integration with Outlook. Uh, and the way you would do that is you click on the Sync to Outlook button that's at the top of the screen when you're viewing your task list. Uh, click on OK with the window, and the tasks will also will actually appear uh, here where it says Other Tasks. Uh, you'll have the, the, all the task lists to which you have subscribed in SharePoint. They'll all appear there as well. So that's, that's very handy. If you're out in the field, for example, you can uh, check off tasks with your, from your other task list in Outlook. And what that would do is uh, update the SharePoint site back in the office and uh, let the project manager know about that. Uh, so it's kind of a nice uh, interaction with that, too. So um, I guess the other thing is calendars, and, and calendar is a view. A calendar also interacts, inter, um, sorry, integrates directly with, SharePoint, with uh, Outlook, too, uh, through SharePoint. So I can take a task list and I can view it as a calendar. Um, maybe this is going to be a, um, a, a way of viewing the list that's going to be very friendly for a client or someone outside of the organization. Uh, or maybe there's some other application where a calendar is going to be the preferred way to see a list of tasks. Um, I can also do overlay calendars. Uh, this is an example of several different calendars for uh, one company being shown on the same screen. Uh, and that works very well, uh, of course. Uh, maybe an example for a project in a project management scenario would be that you'd have a separate project calendar or a separate project task list that, uh, for each of the different clients that you're working with. And you want to have one screen where these all stack on top of each other so that you can see if there's a day where there's a bottleneck, where you're going to have a 14-hour day because every client you have has a deliverable due that day. Uh, or maybe there's some other application for it as well, but you can have these overlaid calendars and these color-coded calendars within SharePoint. So this is an idea of taking several calendars and combining them into one. Now the opposite is also possible too, which is a filtered calendar. And that's, I have one large calendar for the uh, project calendar in this example. And then I can click on the view and I can choose 
just the Johnson uh, projects, or just the Johnson uh, events that are due, and that will filter out and show only the Johnson events. And I can again go back in and show only the Smith events, for example, and that will show only the Smith events. And that way I can go through and, and uh, you know, take a large amount of data and, and filter it down to just the data I'm looking for um, at that given moment. Now, I mentioned client portals very briefly before, and that's a great uh, use for SharePoint. Uh, client portals can really be anything. It can be, um, you know, a, a stakeholder of any sort at all, uh, needing to interact with the data who are outside the organization. But the idea is basically that you have internal use of SharePoint with documents, calendars, client content information, uh, tasks and process, and all the, the, the collaboration that happens when you, when you work together. Uh, clients need to see some portion of that, too. And instead of going through and writing out a, a monthly e or a weekly email or an update or something like that, you could have them have a portal they could log into and get a quick bird's eye view as to how the project is going. So documents might be just reports. Uh, calendars might be just the due dates, I mean just the high level, um, the, the big events that they should be aware about. Uh, client content information, I mean information about the client, might be vendor uh, as opposed to that so that they're able to go back and see you know, uh, who's working on the project. Uh, instead of tasks, you might have milestones, uh, meaning just the high-level uh, uh, tasks that have to be accomplished and the due dates for when those are. And just in short, instead of process, you're showing results to the client. And uh, uh, that's what, what SharePoint where, where does very well, actually. It does very well showing the right content to the right person at the right time. So instead of client, you might have instead you know, uh, an investor who's interested, uh, a board member or a stakeholder of any sort at all, who might be interested in the data, and that's going to be, uh, you know, the purpose of having a portal so that people can access that information. Uh, the last way I'll talk about is Project Server. Project Server is one of those things that um, if you if you need it, you probably know what it is and know know that you need it. Um, if you use Microsoft Project and you're using that on a desktop level to track individual projects, and that works very well. But let's say you're in an, organ in an organization in which those projects interrelate heavily or the reporting for those projects is very important or you're trying to do things where you're tracking resources and, and seeing um, how many hours for each project this resource has been dedicated around. Well, in those scenarios, you're going to have to combine that. Or you're, you can combine that using Project Server, and that creates a very nice interface for it. Project Server actually sits on top of SharePoint. Uh, um, uh, deploying Project Server is not a simple thing to do. It's, it's usually a very sizable project, but then it's also going to, going to be the central software that runs the company or the division uh, once it is employed. So it is you know, definitely worth adopting and looking at that. So those were nine ways to manage projects and schedules using SharePoint. Again, I'm Stephen Nichols, and uh, my contact information is there. I'm happy to talk about SharePoint. I love SharePoint. I'd, I'd love to hear about your project. and and uh, trade ideas with you. So please do reach out if I can do anything at all for you. Uh, but in any, in any case, uh, thank you very much for your time and your consideration. Uh, best of luck with all your SharePoint projects.